Hey guys, I want to talk today about something a little bit different, uh, a sort of foundational level of psychology and self-development that we rarely, rarely ever address. But I think it's a very important topic, which is mental clarity. Now, by mental clarity, I mean, if you imagine your mental faculties on a scale from zero to 100, and you know where you are at your best, are you there right now? Because what I've found in my own life is that it varies. I can go uh, down to 80% on a typical day, or I might be all the way down to 50% if I'm extremely stressed and having a really bad week and distracted by something significant going on in my life. I can bounce all over the place. Understanding the factors that contribute to your mental clarity and the factors that take away from your mental clarity, I think is an essential aspect. It's a little bit like if you're trying to drive a race car and the horsepower of your race car is going all over the place, up and down, you're gonna have a very hard time winning races. You're gonna have a very hard time even driving that car. It's the same with your mind. Now, one of the really fascinating things about this is that when our mental clarity is low, we're aware of it. But because our mental clarity is low, uh, it's difficult for us to understand what's happening. It's difficult for us to look at it objectively. We just don't have the extra horsepower to stop and reflect and say, what's wrong in my life? What do I need to fix? How has my mental clarity been so affected? Why am I so distracted? Your brain is already on overload. So giving it another task of deep self-reflection feels nearly impossible. But for me personally, I've been through periods in my life where my mental clarity felt far, far below where I know it can be, where it is right now. And at the time, I had no idea what was going on. And I didn't even know that I could do something about it. I didn't know whether I was contributing to that, whether it was under my control at all. Um, and, and as I said, because my brain was already on maximum overload, trying to, to, fig, trying to do more with it just felt nearly impossible. So I'd, I'd get stuck in that situation for years at a time without any understanding of, is there some life factor here that's causing this or is there something lacking from my life? that's causing this. And I've had a chance to reflect on it. I was very fortunate that I managed to find my way out of that sort of valley of mental clarity. Some of you may be in that now. Some of you may have experienced this in the past and know what I'm talking about. Some of you may experience this later, in which case I want to prepare you for it now so that you're aware of it and know what steps to take. For me, I found there are probably four key things that I can identify that make a big difference in my mental clarity. And I hope that these, these will help you. Number one is identifying your stressors. What is it in your life that is stressing you out? When your mind feels paralyzed and overwhelmed, quite commonly for me, that meant I was overworking. And I loved overworking. I over, I'd overwork because I was a perfectionist. I'd overwork because I felt like I was doing something worthwhile there, when in doubt, keep running, you know. Um, and I'd push and push and push myself to the absolute maximum. Now I recognize that that was the value of growth. I wanted to do more, I wanted to be more, I wanted to learn more, but I wasn't applying it in an effective way. Uh, if you know the 3X model, I was stuck on engage. I would never stop, I would never heed the warning signals that hey, I'm overdoing it here, I need to stop, I need to rest, I need to recover, I need to reflect, and then I need to improve, and then and then go back to engage. I just got stuck in engage for years and years, dec probably decades. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was kind of insane in a sense that I kept doing the same thing, hoping that it would just get better, that I'd suddenly break through the wall and then things would be different, but I was creating this problem myself. So the first thing I encourage you to check is what is stressful in your life and what control do you have over that? It may be simply making certain that you give yourself breaks. 
It may be changing your job. It may be questioning who's in your life. It may be questioning uh, what activities you have in your life. It might be simply stopping and going away for a weekend to journal and reflect on where you're at. You'll, if you don't do these things, you'll feel stress. There's, there's another very important one here, though, which deserves a series of podcasts, which is that one of the biggest stressors I discovered in my life was that I didn't know how to balance things. I pick, if, if, if you know my work, I divide my self-development world into five areas. Uh, my mindset, what's inside my head, psychology, values, reflection, self-awareness, self-acceptance, everything inside my head. Health and fitness is the second category. Third category is career, work, investment, money type things, creating resources, building a nice physical place to live. Category four is relationships, all kinds of relationships from romantic to family and friends and work relationships. And number five is mission, life mission. What I found is if all my attention is on one area, like work, and I've set everything else aside so that I'm not paying attention to the other four areas at all. I'm not taking care of myself. I'm not going to the gym. I'm not investing in relationships. I'm not thinking about my future or what impact I'm having on the world. I'm just focused on work. Then that lack of balance is a huge, huge source of stress. Even though your rational mind is entirely focused on this one thing, your your uh, subconscious mind is fully aware that these other areas are being completely completely neglected, and I've found that happens no matter what area I am fixated on, even if I am fixated on health and fitness to the exclusion of all else, or if I'm fixated on a relationship to the exclusion of all else. Balance is essential. So, as a big part of your question. What's stressing me? Ask yourself, am I balanced across these five areas of my life? Am I covering everything that's necessary for me to have a good, optimal life? So stress, number one. Number two, most significant thing I found that affects my level of mental clarity, the feeling of fogginess, like a cloud has descended into my thinking and is obstructing my, my view, is dopamine. Oh, fortunately, today we live in a world where we've learned just enough about dopamine and our neurochemistry and neurotransmitters to be dangerous. All advertising, all marketing is really an exercise in how to get your dopamine, uh, your attention. Look at Facebook and exactly how it alerts you and what it turns on in your feed. Look at your phone and how it beeps and how every single app has push notifications. Every single app. It's ridiculous. Uh, everyone is trying to get your attention. And you have to learn to manage that. But your dopamine, there are many other things that impact your dopamine as well that you also have control over. Uh, a good example of this would be sugar, right? Now, you go to buy a hamburger, and there's a very good chance if you go to a fast food restaurant, there's going to be sugar in that hamburger. There's sugar everywhere. There's even sugar in salads and greens that you buy pre-packaged in some cases. Being aware of this and realizing that all these things affect your dopamine is very important. Other key influences, porn, caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, video games, Tons and tons of things that are probably in your world all the time have a huge impact on your dopamine. And learning those sources and how they affect you is, is, is very essential to maximizing your ability to engage your brain at 100%. If you look at school kids, uh, there's some very fascinating research that was done as soon as Facebook came out, uh, complaints of anxiety, uh, ADHD went through the roof on campuses. And it was simply that suddenly there's this constant influx of information, this constant distraction, this constant dopamine trigger, and it creates this, this very, one of the things dopamine does is distract you. Its function is to draw your attention to something else. So if there's dopamine all the time in your head, how do you think you'll be able to focus on anything? And this is essentially what's happening. We're 
basically living in a sea of dopamine right now. So learning how to identify and manage and control what influences can affect you is very, very important. Manage your distractions, manage the chemicals coming into your body is very important. A third area I found very, very important is exercise. Now, I've got a few theories on this, but it wasn't until I began exercising regularly, I mean like five times a week, that I really saw very significant differences in my mental clarity. Now, I think these things interconnect in some ways, but exercise by itself seems to have a huge amount of benefit for your brain. Now, there's a lot of research that the reason we have large brains to begin with is largely about motion, enabling complex physical motion. There's some very interesting evolutionary biology uh, tied to this. There's a there's a uh, an invertebrate creature called a sea squirt, I think, that when it's a, in the larval stage, it has a little brain and it swims around until it finds a nice home and attaches to a wall. And then because it doesn't need to move anymore, it digests its brain because a brain is an expensive thing. So why should you be consuming all of that wattage if it's not actually needed for anything? And we run into the situation as well in some degree. Hopefully you're not digesting your brain, but if you're not moving, consider what that means for all the parts of your brain your motor cortex, your visual cortex, your balance, all these things that were designed to enable you to move. What happens when you don't use it? Does it shut down? Does that affect your overall clarity? Does your brain feel out of whack and underutilized? I definitely give it a try. For me, I incorporate dancing, which involves lots of movement, right? Yoga, uh, I just recently started some hip hop, uh, and Jim. Now, Jim has been very significant for me, and I think it's for a, a second reason, which is the production of serotonin. As I understand it, lifting weights in particular will trigger for men testosterone, possibly for women as well, testosterone increase and uh, serotonin increase. You do something very hard, and on the other side of that is that feeling of, wow, that, that feels great. That, that's absolutely an amazing feeling. In many ways, there's evidence that serotonin and dopamine compete. If your dopamine goes up, your serotonin is pushed down. This is why you feel anxious. You feel all this distractedness, and then you also feel a lack of acceptance. Your serotonin is dropped. If you push your serotonin up, I believe it probably also normalizes or at least counterbalances the dopamine levels. I find that if I feel anxious and distracted and confused and just out of sorts, if I drag my ass to the gym, which I can do, I can do that even in this foggy state of, I don't, I can't focus on anything, right? I can still go to the gym. And when I go to the gym, I know that in 30 minutes time, I'm going to feel phenomenal. I'm going to feel a hundred times better. It's a very, very important part of me managing my awareness, managing my mental clarity. So figure out what exercises work for you. Try different things. Perhaps it's running, perhaps it's swimming, perhaps it's tennis. Uh, anything that involves movement and particularly that involves muscular engagement, if you're a man, I think will help you balance out the distraction of, of dopamine and will help you balance out your overall physical and neurochemistry in a very positive way. I can say for sure that I've never felt better than when I have a regular aspect of exercise in my day. Fourth and final key factor is water. Sorry for all the beeping there, someone's texting me. Fourth and final characteristic. I tend to drink a lot of coffee. I love coffee. I love the flavor of coffee. I do carefully manage the level of caffeine because I understand through personal experimentation, that extremely high levels of, of uh, caffeine will, will push my dopamine level up and I'll, rather than feeling more alert, I'll feel scatterbrained. So I manage that. And the way I, and, and as I've realized, partly with going to the gym regularly, 
is that I need to drink more water anyway because I'll be dehydrated after a good gym session or after a good yoga session. So, and I feel fantastic. I felt great after the gym or the yoga session and then I drink a liter of water and I feel amazing, clearer, clear as a bell. Now, this is very significant to me and I've begun incorporating it in other areas. So, for example, I'll allow myself to drink coffee or even a diet soda once in a while but I must follow that with a liter of water. And that helps me balance out all of these different things in my life. If your water level, if your hydration is low, there's a pretty good chance that that affects your brain's ability to operate at a maximum level. These are the things that I've noticed in my own life that have a huge impact on my own mental clarity, but you need to find your own. So I, I'd encourage you to start with these but build your own program and do your own investigation. And one of the one of the key things you can do is set even if you're in your worst possible mental state of capacity. You've got like the clouds have descended and you can see nothing. You're in a, on a scale of 1 to 10, you're at a 1 on a daily basis of mental clarity. You can still set a reminder in your phone every day doesn't matter dinner time let's say 8 p.m set a reminder that reminder is to journal your journaling even if you can't do anything else should have this one question this one question is how clear was i today one to ten ten being your maximum what this does is draw your attention in a very reflective and self introspective way on how am i doing in my head if you don't ask this question you'll never change it right so what you're looking for is what factors seem to make me feel more clear? What factors seem to make me feel less clear? And you want to begin documenting those and looking for those. So on a particular day, if you say, actually, I felt noticeably clearer today, the next question is, so what was different? What did you do differently? Or what did you do yesterday that was different that diminished your intellectual strength and awareness? I think that the, the, the purpose of pursuing clarity is to give you as much strength, mental strength and capability as possible so that you can improve the rest of your life. If you, you could have the best car in the world, but if it's got no fuel, you're not going anywhere. So make certain that this is a part of your reflection. How am I doing? How strong am I intellectually? How capable am I of focusing on what I want and understanding where I want to go and simply having the capacity to reflect on my life and where I am right now? I hope that this helps you and I'm very keen to hear what you discover.